What's up guys, welcome back to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at Supermicro Computer, SMCI stock, ticker symbol SMCI, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Tuesday, February 27th. Well guys, a relatively tame day for SMCI stock here, up $16.33 a share, 1.9%. For most other stocks, that would be a pretty great day. For SMCI, that might as well be a flat day, but hey, green's green. So let's take a look here, starting on the one minute chart. First of all, guys, I have been covering SMCI every single trading day and in preparation of every single trading day. So if you'd like to uh, get updates on when I'm uploading SMCI videos, as well as a variety of other securities, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, I have a goal, I wanna reach 3,000 subs by the end of this trading week. So um, if you get value out of these, please subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. Let's take a look here. This is the one minute chart. Okay, we'll start here. You can see that it's down about six points, sorry, eight points after hours here. If you guys watch these videos for any extended period of time, which I hope you do, you'll hear me say a lot. See that after hours volume? If you're watching on a phone, you probably are struggling to see anything. There are tiny little bars there. It's very low. Okay, and when volume is that low, it's incredibly easy in the after hours to bully a stock, to push it around, to move it. So, listen, if after hours volume is as low as it typically is, which it'll only ever be a much higher, typically with a catalyst, like an earnings day or something. When volume is low in the after hours, take it with a grain of salt, whether it's in your favor, flat, or moving against you. The real test comes at market open on the following day. Now, as far as intraday trading opportunities go, scalp opportunities uh, generate some revenue around a core position. You know, there really weren't a lot of setups on SMCI today. Yeah, I'm sure we had some scalpers trying to trade these little wiggles around these EMAs. But to be honest with you guys, I have found through a, a lot of forward testing that unless a stock is in play, which SMCI, you know, finished the day much less volatile than we've seen as of late, which is fine. But as far as from a scalping mentality, um, trading wiggles off of EMAs, to me, it's such a psychological trade that I need the stock to be in play. What is in play? Elevated relative volume, right? Substantial eyes on the name, big mover typically, traditional momentum trading, right? And I have found that if you're trying to trade wiggles around EMAs on stocks that aren't really in play, which is like 99% of the market each day, there's no edge. There's, there's, I have found negative expected value in that. It's a waste of, it's a waste of time, right? So if SMCI happens to be in play again tomorrow, I'm going to be watching little moves like this for some scalps. If you are scalping SMCI during the day though, keep in mind the bid ask spread tends to be a buck or two wide. So ensure we're utilizing limit orders, right? And accounting for that for some slippage um, on stop outs. Okay. Now let's move away from the intraday mentality and start taking a look at the day to day mentality here on the five minute chart, go through our, uh, our typical kind of daily ritual here, right? Starting with the five minute, we're looking at volume. So for example, the biggest moves today, you had this kind of dump off in the morning and then recovery. Did we see any substantial changes in volume here on the five minute that lead us to believe that, and we have to be contextual, right? Based on time of day, that one move or the other was much more agreed upon by a bigger sample size of the market. Now, what's interesting here, we did see big volume on those first three five minute candles. Of course, the opening bell, you know, where you always expect the biggest volume of the day typically on that opening five minute candle, almost always. And we actually did see some relatively high volume on these, on primarily this one bigger red candle. But we also saw pretty substantial volume on that bottoming candle that ended up being the reversal candle. So, you know, for me, I, I can't really pull anything definitive out of the five minute, but bulls, just understand if you're spending some time like in our free discord tonight or on chat rooms or stock twits or whatever it may be, understand that you're going to have some bears that are boasting about that volume on that downside move saying, yeah, you know, the stock recovered, but did you see the volume on the downside move, move off the open? You're probably going to see a lot of that sentiment, but listen for me, given that we had with context, right? Over a quarter million shares traded on the reversal candle that ultimately led to the reversal that essentially held and consolidated into the close. For me, the five minute chart is a wash. So let's move on to the 30 minute chart and take a look here. 
getting really contextual about day-to-day -day levels, self-fulfilling prophecy levels to watchers. You can see that since we covered on Friday, the 200 period and the 50 period moving averages here on the 30 minute chart have tightened up. Okay, and bulls, we are on the upside of that. Now, typically when you see two levels like that tighten up, I have found that it doesn't completely double the strength of the level, but I have found just a rough estimate. It seems to strengthen a level by maybe 50%, okay? So bulls, as we head into tomorrow, ideally going to want to see both of those levels hold and ideally pull away to the upside. Put some put some distance in between us and that, that tight kind of double level now. Bears, what you're going to want to see on the 30 minute is really clear. Get down below both of these. Crack the 50, quickly crack the 200, re retest both of them ideally, and prove them as resistance. Meaning get down through, retest, and fade downside. Claiming them as resistance, at least in the short term. That's what bears are going to be looking for tomorrow. All right, now moving on here to the four-hour chart, let's take a look. You can see that this 50 period is still incredibly in play. We held it here today, like we d discussed last Friday. Bulls going to want to see a continuation of that hold. Ideally, see that 50 period continuing to trend upside while the stock holds it. Really simple here on the four hour. Bears, you know, that 50 period is lining up with 850. You're going to want to see a downside break of both 850 and the, uh, the 50 period on the four hour. Downside break, really simple. Retest and fade. Ideally, getting this 50 period to flatten out, if not start to curl over a little bit on the four hour chart. Now, let's get to the, uh, the most important chart of all. This is the heaviest, the he most heavily watched, the daily. And the daily oftentimes will paint the most obvious story. And this is really similar, okay, to what we've been seeing. The story on SMCI to me is really obvious. You can see we're right around 900. Bulls, going to want to see 900 reclaim as soon as possible. And that could give us a little bit of a trampoline to boost up toward that really, really big psycholo psychological level in the short term of a thousand bucks a share. All right, because that's kind of the ultimate goal here in the very near term, right? Bears, two things. Reject 900 by all means necessary, right? Get down and crack below 800 bucks a share is what you guys are primarily looking for as soon as possible. All right, now with the charts out of the way, let's take a look at the bias that we got out of the options traders here on SMCI today. We have 183,000 total contracts traded. That's a pretty good sample size. We can get some data out of that. And what'd they say? Well, this is all from today, by the way. We had 103,000 calls and 80,000 puts. So we are seeing a slight call side bias here on SMCI today, but we can break it down by time frame. This is really interesting. Look at this. The 0 to 20 delta range, those are typically those short-term bets. The short-term sentiment, those are the out-of-the-money, cheapy, gambly-style calls and puts. 47,000 calls and just under 45,000 puts. Actually relatively undecided here, which is really interesting. But if we go down here, you can see that the more at-the-money and the slightly in-the-money are leaning pretty heavily to the call side. All right, The uh, just slightly out-of-the-money, the 20, well, kind of like mid-range out-of-the-money, the 21 to 40 delta range is barely leaning to the call side, but still kind of undecided. And then the deep, deep in the money, very low volume, but it is leaning heavily to the call side. So not an overwhelmingly biased chain here today, but it is leaning call heavy. And it is doing so on all of the delta ranges and, and, and of course the overall call put ratio as well. Listen, as always around here, manage your risk. That's number one. Make sure that uh, you're not taking any one factor um, and, and maybe weighting it too heavily. These are all just factors, part of the big picture that we just kind of laid out. You got to put them all together and then make a decision for yourself. Manage your risk. The options traders can, of course, be wrong. Listen, if you got value out of this video, please subscribe to the channel. I'm uploading these every single day. If you want to come trade with me in the private group every day, take a look at that first link in the pinned comment. Hope to see you join, and I'll see you soon.